Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of No Moria. We have completely explained the menu system so far, and what we are going to do now is play the game. All right. So let's get back to where we was. What were we doing? We were building things. Yes, we were. We built our beds. As you can see, a couple people are using them. Uh, we finished blocking everything off. So we are basically groomed to posture. We have everybody in military events, or I mean military groups, so that if we get attacked, everybody will handle their business. So let's unpause it and start playing the game. We're just waiting now on these buildings, these things to be complete. Once I get all of these machines made, I'll start using my miners and we'll start building rooms in here. Um, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do so. What the heck are you doing there, Jim Bob? Oh, he's putting that torch up finally. I wanted a torch there, that way even at the night time, that area would be highly visible in case something came walking through. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go, got a torch. Alright, so, another thing we need to do is get rid of this. So let's pause it real quick. We'll go to, no, it's build. My bad. Terrain. Dig. Dig ramp down. There we go. There we go. Let's rotate around to make sure we didn't accidentally get the ground anywhere. Which we didn't. All right, now dig that out, and then all of this will be completely flat. Which would be good, good, good. Okay. Haven't really done a whole lot more in here. Probably, probably going to dig this up and then across and make that into a great hall. And then let everybody run out of it. Now, my last one, I did some really cool stuff with the mountain. Um, using the edge of the mountain to come off of it and and I built a uh, kind of like a, a view a, a ledge with multi-platformed or multi-leveled ledge coming off over some water which was kind of cool and I might do that here too I could always cut all of this out make that kind of flat and then let the water seep back but I don't know we'll see the creativity point in this game is whatever you want it to be. So that's what's cool about it. You can do anything with the train you want. Pretty much at least. Alright, do some farming for me. Need to make some more beds. Temporarily. I like to have about four or five. One, two, three, four now. I like to have about four or five. That way there's always enough for people to sleep on. Now these are not the best beds, but they will suffice until I get my tailoring and stuff, which I can't get until we get attacked the first time and I can kill something and get a bone. Um, but I do need the butchery table before then, which is one of these somewhere. Uh, right there, maybe? Yeah, butcher shop. A lot of these are just waiting on planks because these guys are pretty low level and they're just spitting out planks very slowly. He's got no planks there. How I many we got? We got... Oh, we got a bunch of planks. So we just got to wait on people to get over here and build stuff. Got a table built already. I can see that and a chair up underneath it, it looks like. What this is, I bet you my, either my carpenter, there's my mason. There he is. My carpenter's in there sleeping. You just got to wait. It's not a big deal. There's no big rush. But once they get all of this done, and these other two, that'll be all of the main ones that I need. And then what I'll do is I'll end up, we'll start designing this and figure out how we're going to do the, uh, how we're going to do the um, 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 infrastructure inside. It'll probably be like a great room or something, a great hall, line branch going off of it to a handful of workstations like carpentry and stone. And then coming off the other side to maybe the tailoring and the leather working and stuff like that. Then another one coming off leading to some prospecting or whatnot. And then one coming off and angling up the bedrooms. Because I like to build all of their bedrooms inside. Now you can build on top of soil. You can build walls up. 
it's a little bit difficult to do, but you can do it. I've done it. It's just, uh, I don't know, they're gnomes. To me, they're supposed to live in the mountain. This ain't towns. Towns, you have humans. They're people that work outside, live outside, build houses for. These guys are gnomes. They, they, they feel more comfortable, I would reckon, inside the walls. So... We'll see, though. I mean, them being outside, granted, that's a, or, I mean, inside, rather, that's given, but we'll see where we go with the uh, the whole design scheme on this one, because it's pretty much one of them, you know, glow with the flow as you go. You can sit down and you can try and design it all if you want to, but, meh. It's not really that vital. Granted, for efficiency's sake, now, why ain't you cutting that one down? For, uh, dig ramp down. For efficiency's sake, it's, it's far better to, you know, design your workstations in a good flow to your stockpiles. But the way that I end up doing it, the way I did it in my other, and I'll probably will in this. Ooh, there we go, our first goblin, and he's got a sword. Let's go, boys. There's two of them. Now, here I'll show you this. See how you can click it? Goblin fighter, clump, clump. It's talking about the goblin fighter. We can go and see, we can see his overview. We can look at his skills, which are all pretty low. Um, his equipment, all he's got is a worn copper claymore. He's in good health. Now we can go to the attack. And what we can do is we can set it up. All right, do I want just this, this group to attack? Of course I want all groups to attack, but you can set up just for one squad, for two squads, for just your range to go kill it, just your melee, uh, whatever you want to do. You can do all that in the attack menu. That's the issue, follow attack orders or attack commands. That's where that matters. At any time I just hit back and they'll follow any of these orders that are left. Um, what I like to do right now is save the game, especially this early. Then go to resume. That way, just in case they get a lucky hit and kill somebody, I can reload and then do the fight again. And I'll do it from right here again, but the attack rolls will be different. So just because you get killed doesn't mean you'll always get killed. Starting off, you've got about 25 or 30 band-aids. So even if they get hurt, you're still going to be semi-okay usually. And watch, my entire village just kind of surrounds them and ganks them. There they go. We got them dead. Now I can look, and there will be blood trails if any of my guys got injured, which it doesn't look like anybody did. Everybody, maybe this guy. But you can go back now in events, and you can go into combat. You can go to here and find the day, and it'll show you the group fight, and there it is. And you can read all of this if you want to, and it's a really colorful log of everything that happened during that combat. Basically, it doesn't show you numbers for attack rolls, but it tells you what happened. Um, and then you got hit and miss chances and stuff like that. That's all rolled, you know, under the table behind all this. And they use this fancy little descriptive thing telling you where they hit, what they hit with, how they hit, uh, what happened when they hit, that type of, of deal. Like he fell to the ground uh, back here, catches his breath, and he gets back up. So apparently right before that he'd gotten knocked down. And uh, then he kicks him, hit him in the upper body, smashing the skin, splintering the ribs, puncturing the left lung, stopping at the left lung and crushing the left lung. The goblin is suffocating. The goblin has died. You know, and you can go back through here and you can see if any of your people got hurt and all that other stuff. I don't tend to do that, but I just wanted to show you that it's there. These are the basic events that happen. This I check quite often because it's what shows up down here. Uh, goes right here into events like we, we saw at Honey Badger. Uh, a yak was born, four nomads arrived, then we saw two goblins just now, and then both goblins are dead. None of my people are dead because it would show up in there. So we're good to go. Now we have a couple days before we, uh, before we have to worry about invasions. So what I need to do is I need to get this, get this built as soon as possible. I need a knife. So let's go back over here to the place where we make knives. Let's, oh, there's a problem right there. I wasn't accepting generated jobs. That's why all my buildings aren't being made. Remember I turned it off to get rid of that other stuff? All right. Yep, there he goes. He jumps over there and he starts going. 
make sure that's the only one. Yep, except generated. Except generated. I know that one's accepting. And except generated. So you got to be careful with some of these settings because if you turn them off, you have to remember to go back and turn them back on. Like we've probably wasted, you know, a few minutes. Not long because we've only been playing for a few minutes, 10 minutes. Um, only actually been playing about eight of that. So we wasted about seven and a half minutes because I had that turned off on accident. And I did it a few episodes ago before, you know, when I was actually playing. So I forgot to re-enable it, which is not a big deal. We got four days before our first merchant arrives. And uh, hopefully we'll get a couple. But I've got two stands built just in case. You have to have one stand per possible merchant. Um, so if you want the opportunity to have more than one merchant, you have to build more than one stand. Now, it's still a random number of how many you get. You might get none. You might get one. You might get two. If I had five stands, you can get a random number between zero and five. The most I've ever had come is three, though. So, All right, there we go. There's that table being built. I want to get these other tables built, though, because I want to hurry up and crunch up these goblins, cut them up into some meats, and then some bones, and then get this table built, or get the uh, bone carving table built, rather, right here, I think. Yeah, so that I can make that bone needle, and then I can make my tailor shop, or my tailor thing. Right now, the only thing that my tailor can do is make uh, band-aids, uh, bolts of cloth, which we want to craft to, craft to, we'll do 50. Sorry. Uh, there we go. So we'll craft uh, 50 bolts of cloth. That way my tailor's busy doing stuff. This is my leather worker. We can make leather panels, helms, leather armor, all that other good stuff. I'm not worried about this yet. I'm not going to make any armor until my guys are above at least 40 or so in dodge. Um, not that it matters for these guys. But when I bring in my soldiers, when I finally get my kingdom worth up some and get some soldiers, I'm going to let them fight unarmed until they get their skills up to about 40 or so in dodge. Maybe some people go as high as 60 and 70. That way their dodge is higher. I like to go to about 40 or so, maybe 45, 50 at the most. And then I start issuing them, building them armors. That way they're uh, taking far less damage. Mr. Whippish, you fell asleep on the floor. That tells me that I need more beds. All right, so let's let's pause it. Let me go to stocks. Let's see how much uh, straw we have down. Uh, plant, straw. See, we've got no straw. We've got zero straw. Uh-oh. All right, we need some straw. Chop, chop. Where'd all my straw go? Oh, it's in there. Okay, never mind. We're okay then. Woo, I was worried about straw, but they've been putting it in there. I don't know how to get it out of there. Just a heads up. I do not know. You can move to it and see, but you, I think once it's in a trough, you have to... I don't think you can get it out of the trough again. I don't know. I don't know how at least. So, um... Building to it. It's okay though. We'll build up enough straw, and then we'll build some regular, some more beds. It's not a big deal. This stuff will pop up. It'll go crazy between now and winter. So we get, we've still got another whole, whole month. So everything's good. I was just worried about my animals. Uh, that's why the shock and surprise was there at the beginning. What, we got no straw? Well, we've got straw, but it's in troughs. And because it's in troughs, it doesn't show up in your kingdoms list. So remember to check your troughs on your animals every once in a while to make sure that straw and stuff and seed for the uh, emu, make sure that those an, those they're, they're getting put in there. Um, which they always do if you've got them generally. I've only had run into that one problem, and that was because I, you know, where my, my things died uh, in my other game. I lost all of them. All of my eboos, all of my yaks died. They don't die. They leave and run off the screen but and disappear at the edge of the screen outside your town. But still, they ran away. And the reason that that happened was because I only had one trough in each, so they built it up with 32, and they weren't working to get seed or to get... Uh, wheat collected they had uh i had built a huge floor that thing that i told you that i built over the water that that big uh um great hall that i built it uh i had built the whole floor out of marble 
and it was like 60 or 80 blocks just on the floor and they were all building that instead of taking care of the things and it happened to be like a couple days before winter so everything had just gotten picked and, and none of it got receded you know since about the fourth or fifth of the month they had worked the rest of the 12 days like seven days working building that floor and nobody had reseeded anything so i didn't grow any wheat that entire month and my things starved so you got to be careful watch your gardens watch your farms they call them gardens in the list but they're actually farms um, make sure that your farms are growing food that they're being replanted don't issue out huge areas of stuff to be built issue out little you know little clumps at a time when it's done then go issue out another clump to do that way they can stay on top of their actual jobs All right, we got our bone carver. Now I can show you the bone work. Um, you want to go into overview. And here you go. Automatically butcher excess livestock and automatically butcher corpses. You can assign these buildings, these things, to a certain individual, and only that individual will work at them. But you have to be careful with that because if you assign somebody, you know, then nobody else will work at it. Or you can go into the butcher tab and you can individually butcher these corpses. Now, if I hit back and let it go, my flesh smith, which is right there, see, my flesh carver, he's going to grab them, he's going to carry them up there, he's going to butcher them. Now, if I look at the pile, I got some goblin meat. You don't get bones from goblins? I thought you got bones from them too. see I guess all you get is meat from goblins okay hmm what do we got yak a female a yak a male and a female so we got two females and a male I could slaughter a yak right now and it would uh it would give us some bone. I thought goblins gave you bones, but I guess not. I could always go up. We could go find that honey badger who happens to be running around. What time is it? 8.40 in the morning. There's a honey badger running around somewhere. Let's look and see if we can find him. If it's daytime and you look, you can see things moving around. It's only at nighttime that you can't. It really would have been great if that, them goblins had beat up that honey badger for me. He was over here somewhere. I'm not seeing him. they're all working though I'll keep looking for him and see if we can find him and if we can find him we will then go and try and kill him I'll send everybody after him honey badgers are actually pretty mean though so you got to be careful I'll save it beforehand and we'll do it and just to try and get that bone I know there's one here somewhere maybe them goblins killed him and if they did, his corpse would still be there. Oh, I had the game paused anyway, so he wouldn't have been moving. Duh! I'm sure you were all yelling at me. Hey, Zane, your game's paused, man. Nothing's going to move. Come on, Mr. Honey Badger. We just want to be friends. Friends with benefits there he is I saw him I saw him there he goes all right so let's save the game always be careful at the beginning like this because you can lose three or four gnomes to one of these things honey badger go to attack all squads chop chop go kill go kill go kill look at my squad my herd they will kill the honey badger for you boss Get him, boys. Go get him. Look, he's running. Don't be scared. Get him. Kill him. Go 
Oh, somebody's bleeding. Right, let's look at him. How bad is it? Honey Badger. Health. Honey Badger seriously injured his right eye, left eye, and mouth. Honey Badger has an injured upper body, lower body, right leg, right back paw, left leg, left back paw, right front paw, and left. He's blind. Uh, that has to definitely impact his uh, fighting ability. Hopefully we will be able to kill him eventually. Like I told you, these guys are a lot tougher than goblins. Good golly, how long is it going to take to kill this thing? Punch him, guys, punch him. There we go. We got him, finally. Now, kingdom. Where's it at? I thought it was under Kingdom. Pastures, farms, workshops, population, start work, construction, workshop, farms, pastures, rooms. It's somewhere. Maybe it's under population. Injured, too. Two people have injuries. Hopefully they're not serious. Health. He's in good health. All right, we can look at this and see ding a mini nims So we can go to population. Go to assign. Go to ding a mini Go to health. Demon is bleeding from his left arm. All right, who else? Well, that's just dirt. That's not blood. All right, Bingle. Bingle's the other person. Okay, it's not letting me. So population. Assign. Where's Bingle? Bingle. Bingle is bleeding from his upper body and left arm. Bingle has seriously injured his right eye. Where's Bingle? That's Orse. Flork. Flork in the Birkin. Where the heck is Bangle? Come on, Bangle, get home, buddy. Get to them band aids, pals. Alright, so now let's go back to population. Idle, injured, zero. Everybody's better. Everybody's alive. Everybody's good. And we have bones. Bones, honey badger bones. Look at all them bones. You get a skull, you get some meat, some more bones. Oh yeah. Now we can make the bone needle that we need, which for the, uh, what is it, right there, it's done actually. He just built it, the tailor. So now we can do band-aids, bandages. Initially, it's going to suck because they're going to be doing nothing but that. All right, craft a Band-Aid. Craft two, and I already put 50. I always put it over here on accident first. You don't have to. It don't matter if you do. But I want to make 50 Band-Aids. And that's going to make me a total of 50 Band-Aids. So I already have some. How many do I have? Pine Crate. We go into Stocks, Contents. Where's Fiber? We got 32 Cotton. Maybe this ain't the right one. No, there he goes. 25 band-aids. So they're only going to have to make 25 band-aids, which is fine. This guy will make cloth here. In the loom, he'll make bulk cloths. And then either him or the other tailor, if he's not sleeping, will come and start making band-aids. There we go. Get the view back right to where we're, we're normal. So we're doing pretty good. we got our first kills. Uh, two goblins and then a honey badger. Um, we are, we've got most of our shops, actually all of our selected shops built. We still have a couple more to build. We got a stone cutter, a stone mason. We got a carpenter, a sawmill. We got a butcher shop, a distillery, and a kitchen. Did I set the kitchen up to make stuff yet? No. Um, we'll set the set it to make, uh, we got sausages. We don't have any, we don't have sausage yet. We're not going to get many of anything, but we can make grain, loaf breads. So we'll craft a loaf of bread and we'll craft a tin. That way we'll keep at least 10 loaves of bread. We'll go to sausage. We got 12 meats right now. We only get meat when we kill stuff. Um, so we'll go to craft sausage. We'll craft it to 10. 
and then we'll go to sandwiches, which will use a loaf of bread and a sausage to make a sandwich, and we'll go to craft sandwich, and we'll craft a tin. Now what that'll do is he'll make 10 loaves of bread, then he'll make 10 sausages, and then he'll use those breads and sausages to make 10 sandwiches, then he'll make 10 more loaves of bread and try to make 10 more sausages, but he only has two meats left after that, so he'll make two, and then he'll make two sandwiches, and then he'll go back to loaves of bread, and he'll make two loaves of bread, and he won't have any sausages, and he won't have anything to make sandwiches, so it'll sit there, he'll idle, and he'll go do something else. Um, but once I get, which I have goat's milk, shouldn't I? I should have some milk. I don't have any yak milk. They must be drinking it because I'm not making wine yet. Oh, shoot, I'm out of drink. Um, we need to do a couple things real quick. Like first, we need to go to build, workshop, miscellaneous, um, not food and drink, well. Need uh, four blocks and four planks. We're going to build right there over the water. Isn't that over water? Let's go down. That's over water, yes. So we're going to build it right there over the water. That'll give us a well. That way, even when I hit zero drink, they still have something to drink. They won't dehydrate and die. Um, the second thing that we need to do is we need to go into here and get our guy making some daggum wine. Craft two, and we'll do 50. There we go. Back. So now they're going to start. He's going to start making drinks. He'll be popping them out pretty quick. Um, they're going to start making foods. They'll be popping that out pretty quick. A well's going to be built so that they can drink until they start popping them out. And we're good to go again. you got to be careful. Watch your stocks up here. I wasn't paying enough attention. I don't know how long my drink's been at zero. I'm sure somebody was screaming at their screens, Hey, you got no drink. You got no drink. You're going to die. But it's okay. It's okay. Because there, he's already made some booze. And somebody already went up and grabbed it. About as quick as he goes and gets a vegetable, or I mean a fruit rather, and makes a wine, here at the beginning, somebody's going to grab it. There, we're back up to one. Now we're up to nine. Ten. So see, we saved it. We're good. Drinks aren't that bad. You just got to stay on top of all this stuff. I kind of neglected sandwiches and food and drinks and all that other stuff. So, and I'm going to let them walk to here and there to get the stuff because it's not that big a deal. Whenever I start working into here, I'll build stockpiles with everything in it. I've learned a little bit with stockpiles. You don't want to build a big five and six and eight thing stockpile, especially with your food. Now, if it's one thing like wood or something like that, that's fine. But if it's for like food, you want to build individual stockpiles. That way you have a crate of everything in a particular crate makes sorting it easy it makes looking through your stocks easy you can individualize things a lot better like i can build take two and, and use two crates on a two slot stockpile and i can make that uh grain and that way i'll always have two stacks of 32 64 grain uh, then i can take and put two more down or one more down and or two more even and use it for bread so that grain will always have enough i'll always have enough space to store that much grain as bread but then they'll keep filling up the grain so it'll always be full i'll have two stocks two blocks or crates rather of grain two grates of bread and then i can build two and i can put just meats in that or sausage or or goblin meat or whatever and then i can make two more or one more or whatever to put drinks in or two more to put one more to put that in um storage we'll get into in the next episode though probably because i plan to start digging in and uh there's a lot to know about storage because you'll end up through trial and error figuring out what goes into what uh, the easiest thing to remember is uh, that things that are things that will grow or have been grown tend to go into bags and then all other crafted type materials have a tendency to go into crates uh, so like your grains your seeds um, things like that go into bags your bread sausage vegetables or, I mean fruits all of that goes into crates liquids go into barrels of course but it's, 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 it's even worse than that. Drinks go into barrels. Made drinks like wines and uh, beer and stuff like that go into barrels. Um, that's about all that goes into barrels, actually, is, is drinks. 
right now but you know that just makes storage easy uh, you will in the long run eventually at one point or another end up with probably as many bags or more bags than crates uh, because of the storage size and whatnot crates hold 32 bags hold 32 but you end up with a lot more things that go into bags like seeds you'll end up with thousands of seeds and you'll sell them to the merchants um, you'll end up with a ton of grain uh, bunches of cotton but cotton goes in cotton goes in bags too I think um, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure cotton goes into bags also. Yeah, it does actually, from what I remember. Uh, but, uh, bolts of cloth go into crates, bandages go into crates. So, uh, like I say, we'll get more into that into the next episode because we're hitting 30 minutes. So I'm going to kill this one and I will see you in the next episode where we will start digging into the wall, building storage, possibly even getting into building some beds. If we can get some of this wheat to grow, if we get lucky. If not, we'll just start moving all of this stuff inside um, because we've got a good foothold on the thing and everything's going. So we can end up breaking these down. We'll get all the components back and we'll move them into their own rooms. Uh, Till then, have a wonderful day. If you enjoyed the video or learned something, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Say hi. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode, guys. Have a great day.